lot of big knockouts left and right. The the interesting dance that there is between the two. Uh, I'm they, so sorry. <laughs> they don't. Oh no! Oh, no! <laughs> Not the box. <laughs> The secret box there sitting right at the top. That is the ace pack here. What about on towards end? Whoa, it's a dung beetle. Yeah. Hello, <laughs> Rapska. How Rapska. you doing, little buddy? Yeah, hanging out there in the prize cards there. Is there anything else you see that's too detrimental for either of our players, Kyle? Uh, this could you know, mix. We, we can work with this on yeah. both sides. Not too bad. Obviously, Tord plays a bunch of uh, singleton cards in this list. That's, that's how these control styles, yeah, control-esque styles work. It's hard to call this like an aggressive deck when know. it's when it's a 2-1-2 two, two Charizard line. <laughs> it, yes. It feels slower, but it certainly does perform just fine. Yeah, we're definitely gonna have to get into the intricacies of this deck. You know, what it looks like on paper, how it functions here, because this is not uh, your usual Charizard EX list, that is for sure. But honestly, I expect nothing less from Tord Reklev here. So we'll see if Anthony is able to bring the, the fast pace Raging Bolt into action here against Tord Reklev. Maybe take things down. Let's kick off this game. That was a hand wave. Tord is done with turn one. What? Oh no, just a pheasantipity in the active position here for Tord. He didn't even pass. start his engine. How's he gonna, how's Wait, he gonna race? Yeah, that is very true. Yeah, Torrin has spun out at the starting line here, and we're over to Anthony's side. I mean, you want to see oh, that. Oh, that's a Sada. Hold up. We're almost there. <laughs> we're, we're there, Kyle? We're almost there? It's We're almost there. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, well, Squawkabilly coming down here. That Raging Bolt, of course, starting in the active position. We've already concealed cards, discarding that grass energy into the discard pile, drawing two cards. We're going to discard this entire hand now to squawk and seize off that Squawkabilly EX yeah. into a fresh set of cards here for Anthony. Is, I'm, 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 I'm here? <laughs> I've made it this far? <laughs> There's a chance. And we're not seeing the cards lined up on the other side of the table. It's wow. actually a pile of energies in a Pokemon catcher that doesn't do anything. Are you serious? Oh my goodness. Wow, the bling is out though, I'll tell you what, Kyle. I mean, Anthony was pretty close to a turn one knockout if the cards were, uh, any of these cards were yeah. featured in the last hand, <laughs> but Squawk Billy had to throw them all away. You lose yeah. access to that Sada's and yeah, you take a risk at that point to not have the turn one knockout, but there's a world where you just Sada the one card, draw three, find a Teal Mask and win That's the game true. that way. Yeah, so that is true. Already a little bit of a question mark there as to this opening, but. I mean, if that oh, this hand here is just tough to work with. I mean, yeah, potentially a little clunky here, but Anthony is having to work through this awkward hand. This is kind of, I guess, maybe sometimes the downfall of this deck. If you don't get that fast-paced start, it could go downhill pretty quickly from here and get a little bit awkward. But that Earthen Vessel is going to search out these two energy cards here for Anthony now after a quick discard. Yeah, anytime you're thinning your deck out just to fill your hand with energies, you know you're probably in a bad spot. And that is the case. Just take all of them that you can. And hopefully the next draw is something helpful. You hate to see it though, Kyle. This deck has so much potential here. We just needed some of those pieces, especially facing off with a, just a Pheasantipity EX in the active <laughs> position from Tord. Now, if Tord has any sort of supporter or top deck, something real good, hopefully we can make this deck uh, or hand work on this next turn coming up. But Anthony still going through this turn here. We've discarded quite a lot of resources already. This is how these decks work. They throw a lot away. They get them back with these energy retrievals. But I'll tell you what, this is not usually the sequencing that you see so early in this game. So it was such an expensive hand it and was. it's gone. Yeah, and now it's just, <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, there it it's goes. Gone. That is that is a way to play Pokemon, but you have to do it. Yeah. Throw the cards away with the Burst Roar. Hopefully draw into a cleaner hand for the next turn. Exactly. Maybe Tord does that little hand wave again, you know? Yeah, maybe. Oh. We'll have to see. <laughs> well, it's doing Heavy Ball is going to get us somewhere at least here mm. for Tord Rec left or now. Or will it? <laughs> oh, yeah, because Ravs not even. Yeah, that's... Uh, I guess it'll get a history and heavy ball into the discard pile. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least Tord performed an action this time. <laughs> That's true. That's got to yeah. feel good. That is very true. Uh, Tord, can we flip the script? Can we turn things around maybe 
uh, here in this game. We're going to have to see something happen here. What is in the hands, Kyle? <laughs> that is the, the big question right now. Yeah. We know it's not Buddy Buddy Poffin. Exactly. Or else that would have been played. Maybe Nothing playable. Maybe that's the top deck. But no, this is uh, this could be bad. The Perhaps Arvin. Maybe one of those peppers we've yeah. been hearing about. Yeah. Yeah, we need the salt. We need the pepper. We pepper. need everything we can get right now. Arvin is going to come out. So that's going to get us somewhere here for Tord Reklev. That's going to lead us to an item card as well as a tool card. And you see right away this Buddy Buddy Poppin as well as that uh, technical machine being eyed up here to at least start setting up now. So that turn that Anthony potentially could have capitalized on going second with just a Fezendipity EX in the active is going to start changing real quick here. But the pacing, is it off, Kyle, or can Tord at this point catch up? What oh, do you there's, think? Yeah, there, there's plenty of time. You expect your opponent to have a turn one knockout in a, in a deck like this, and it just wasn't there. So thankfully, you're here at least yes. playing this game. The problem now is you have a TM evolution, and you still don't even have an energy to evolve, and even uh, if you wanted to evolve, <laughs> Pidgeotto's in the prize cards. Oh no. Oh, how did this happen here, Kyle? We, we were saying, oh, we can work for these prize cards. Now it's uh, getting a little bit more awkward here, but Torrid already knows that there, having had a, lick, a look at the prize cards off that Hisuian Heavy Ball. But yeah, as we said, at least we have some Pokemon out here. Now we're over on to Anthony's side of the field. We're gonna see that Teal Mask Ogre Pond hit the bench here and it's gonna start working right away, or should I say dancing it right away, Kyle. It is dancing right now and it's inviting the professor over too. There's plenty of energies to go around here, multiple of those Raging Bolts too. So energies will be flying left and right. This is gonna be quite the board state and uh, you can't flip the script from the discard pile. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. Good point, good point. Well, we have several Teal Mask Ogre Pond EX out now. Um, let's talk a little bit about this deck, I guess, Kyle, since we haven't seen it on the stream yet. We've talked a little bit about how it functions. It's, uh, you know, basic Pokemon that hit very hard. They discard the energy here, um, and then you retrieve those energy back and just try to keep up that pace. But is there anything else you want to mention as far as the strategy that Anthony should be pursuing in this match against Tord's Charizard EX? Very interesting Charizard EX list. No, you, you pretty much hit the nail on the head. That's exactly what you're looking for. You take these knockouts when you can. Sure, it does line up for the Charizard EX to make its way into the mix. But if you have those grass energies on the Teal Mask Ogre Pond, you have the yep. potential to immediately return that knockout. It only takes the three energies against that fully loaded Charizard EX to deal 360 damage and return the favor. So if you have these uh, these grass guys, maybe some superior energy retrieval along the way, as we saw plenty of energies tossed by the wayside, yeah. uh, I'm feeling pretty comfortable as Anthony. Exactly. Teal Mask Ogre Pawn is a major proponent of this deck. As you see, it accelerates the energy with that Teal Dance. Uh, draws you an extra card as well. And then it has an amazing uh, Myriad Leaf Shower move and the Grass Typing that plays so well into these dark Pokemon that we see uh, in our format here, especially if we have a lot of Roaring Moons running around too. Yeah, there's now the question for Anthony. If he has cards like the Pokemon Catcher, maybe you think about uh, taking down the Charmander, but looks like no access there. Just take those two prize cards and <laughs> say, you know what, thank you. That's pretty solid for me. Yeah. Uh, Teal Mask Ogre Pond still has that one grass energy and will be a threat next turn, but here comes the candies. Here comes the candies. We're going to see these evolutions now coming down for Tord Reklev. First one here in that Pidgeot EX. We have the quick search happening for a rare candy. All these combo pieces being put together nice and quick here for Tord. Putting together these pieces, Charizard EX joining the board into that infernal range straight away, accelerating these up to three energy. Just going to be two here as the requirement onto the Charizard EX <laughs> into a super rod. <laughs> super rod, the lone dippity. <laughs> we like to see that. And there's even the Iono to go along with this, yeah. limiting the hand size for Anthony, the potential for the Ogre Pond to return the knockout. A lot of things looking towards way when it was looking pretty bad for a second. But that's the power of Pidgeot. Oh, yeah, Pidgeot is a huge factor in this deck, allowing you to search out those key pieces to make these giant combos happen here for Tord. And so that is what we're seeing. I love the, uh, the matching sleeves to the shirt, too. Those are perfect. 
<laughs> uh, it's looking pretty snazzy over there. <laughs> yeah, taking a quick look at Anthony's resources already used, making sure to keep track of those. Counter Catcher is active here uh, because Torrid Reklev is behind in the prize cards. Anthony having taken two already straight into the Iono. Anthony is going to have to shuffle up that hand, put it to the bottom, draw a fresh four. Torrid is going to get six. Yeah, and this is a great strategy from Torrid. You understand that the real threat is the Teal Mask in a matchup like this, so target that grass energy on the Teal Mask. And that was something we didn't see from Anthony on the following turn when he, or on the previous turn, where he discarded. He, ha he had an opportunity to leave both Teal Mask with a grass energy, yeah, avoid a play like this. Instead, now walks right into it, and there's even room for more. Things could be getting unfair. Oh my goodness, you are so correct, Kyle. Wow, unfair stamp. I mean, Tord's got got the script here. That is for sure. Maybe we haven't. Are you calling it, but, the? But are he's you calling the dip in the top deck? <laughs> no, I, I was saying that he's got the script as far as knowing exactly how to compete against this. N knocking out that teal mask ogre pawn uh, to take the threat off the field as well as the disruption. The disruption is really the key to taking down these Raging Bolt EX decks. If you can make sure their resources are as limited as possible, and then you have answers with your attackers next coming up, you are going to be sitting in a good position. And Tord has done everything to limit Anthony's ability to recover from here after also taking a knockout. Two prize cards down for Tord. Now we're tied up, and it's up to Anthony to respond here. Just a couple cards in the hands after uh, that I, there, draw. There's an earthen vessel, but how many basic energies are actually still remaining at this point? We've seen plenty thrown by the wayside to get to this point. 12 energies in the deck, but gosh, it has to be somewhere around like seven in the discard pile at this point, right? A lot. We're, it's, it's getting to a scary point, but there still should be a little more ammunition there for a Radiant Greninja to conceal cards and hopefully find some help. Well, that Earthen Vessel is going to discard a Pokemon there in that Teal Mask Ogre Pond, get these energy out. Thankfully, it is the Fighting and the Grass. So you have the Fighting Energy for the Raging Bolt and the Grass for the Teal Mask Ogre Pond. Hocus Stop, spin Ooh. the wheel. Oh, we're spinning the wheel. These three cards. No. Oh. <laughs> well, you got the Pal Pad for yeah. the Sada, so it's, it's a net win, I suppose. That's true. That's true. You get a, a nice little item there off that, but... <laughs> a couple of resources down and being recycled potentially down the line here for Anthony. But that Sada is going to be discarded and brought right back. What else can we see coming out of the discard pile off of this pal pad? Another supporter uh, here. So it's just going to be those two Sadas that are going to be recycled back into the deck. Yeah, I'd like to see the fighting energy discarded by the Radiant Greninja with an opportunity to see two additional cards. You can always bring that fighting energy back to the Raging Bolt after you use the Sada's Vitality, and that basically is the only way you're drawing out of this mix. This is, what was that? Uh, I don't know. We it saw looked it. fancy. We oh, it's just the, the Sandy teal. Shocks. Oh, oh no. <laughs> just the Sandy Shocks. The Teal Dance has been used now. Oh. We had the concealed cards. We're going to see a Trekking Shoes. Counter Catch are going to go into the It's not there yet, but there pile. is a Poke Gear. Pokey Gear, can we see a supporter here off this top seven? There oh, it is. Oh, <laughs> here we go, Professor Sada's Vitality, an ancient card that pairs very well into this deck. You target your ancient Pokemon and then attach basic energies from your discard pile onto them. You also get a nice little bonus of drawing three additional cards. That works out just fine. A grass energy or a way to find additional energies would be fantastic at this spot with the teal mask in hand, but we're not seeing it. And that means every energy on board is going bye-bye. Oh, Kyle, we've seen a, a bit too much of uh, discarding here for me to be comfortable with. <laughs> okay, here we go. Well, <laughs> oh? let's, let's flip the script we and see if script? we can find some more help. Are we flipping the script? <laughs> Tor did take a knockout there on that last turn in that Ogre Pond. Resendipity being benched down. We're flipping the script, Kyle. What can we see off these three Just cards? Wants to play an energy for the turn. <laughs> Looks like now that is also the case. That. Lightning energy there. But do you leave this energy on a benched Raging Bolt? Looks like that would yeah. be the play. Yep, it's going to go down onto that Ben Raging Bolt. That's the energy attachment for the turn. Only one for each player. 
to and think of where we came from, Ooh. this was a two-card unfair oh stamp and knockout on a teal mask. Yeah, like how many cards have we drawn now? This is uh, quite a them. bit here. <laughs> and look at this. This is exactly how this deck functions, discarding all of these energies now to be able to uh, to hit hard off of this bellowing. Thunder. Bellow. Yeah, we're bellowing. I think just making sure that all the math is correct here on the board, but that Raging Bolt is raging indeed. Taking a knockout on Charizard EX, it's going down. That's another two prize cards for Anthony Ribeiro in this matchup. And Tord Reklev is sitting on the other side. Pidgeot EX in the active position here. We're gonna jump straight into the deck. First off to start with that quick search. Yeah, there's a couple questions on Tord's mind now. It's how safe do I need to play? My opponent has thrown so many resources to get to this point. But th is there a situation where I can afford to avoid EX Pokemon in play? If you do that with the uh, Professor Churros, then sure, you can pick up that Pidgeot after use, leave all these single prize Pokemon in play, and then maybe you have that follow-up rare candy held in hand and work in that Charmander candy Charizard, but it's risky. <laughs> you're, you're leaving yourself with a Radiant Charizard and hoping to get the job done. If your opponent knocks that out, you need to have the answer right then and there without a Pidgeot in play. Got to do what you got to do. We'll see what Tord chooses to do here as we play through this turn. We're starting off with an Ultra Ball, discarding an Arvin as well as a Bivarel. It all starts with that Charmander. Of course, if you had the Radiant Charizard and the Charmander at the same time, your opponent has to pick one of them to knock out. The other one has the potential to close out the game, whether it be Boss's Orders, Prime Catcher, Rare Candy Charizard. All these things can lead to two more prize cards on the next turn. Yes, exactly. You're setting up these future turns here. That Charmander on the bench now with the fire energy attached. Spin the wheel, Tord. Spin? Oh, my <laughs> no, goodness. No, don't, don't. Stop. Do not Could do this, Kyle. Could you imagine just rips rare no. candy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we are going to see that Professor's Turo there from Tord Reckliff. Uh Get that Pokemon out of there. And now we're over to Anthony once again. Said, where'd, where'd all those Pokemon go that I, I wanted to knock out? This is yeah. nearly as cool. Yeah, we're just uh, sitting with uh, some very low HP Pokemon here right now and that Radiant Charizard as well. Oh, so. look at the size of the deck at this point. What is that, three cards? What? It is dangerous. If you use uh, I Turo, mean, you, you, you could lose. Um, wow. <laughs> I mean, I'm not that surprised. This, uh -oh. this uh -oh. that, we've had, we've seen so many discards uh, in this game, so I'm not super surprised. But Anthony definitely needs to be careful here. Yeah, that's three cards, Kyle. <laughs> that's three Kyle. cards. You that can't, is three cards. You can't use Turo unless you have a way to refill what? the deck. What? Pal wow. Pad's already been used. One yeah, of the it has. Potentially can get you there. It's Just like your energy. Oh, that's, that's a it. resource you can use. Time. That, <laughs> Let's yeah, go to hey. game two. Got to do what you got to do. We're going to a game to Anthony, just realizing, wow, I have three cards left in my deck and all my resources have been utilized already. Can't recycle anything here. I'm just going to scoop things up. And Tord is rolling into the next game with a win. We were, what, an ultra ball away yeah. from, from game one Anthony in two minutes. And sure enough, Tord finds a way out of this, plays it flawlessly and finds that spot to pick up the Pidgeot, move in these single prize Pokemon, and really leave Anthony in a bad spot. He was going to have to play his way into a deck out in order to take a knockout in that yes. turn. And you don't really win from those spots, do you? you no, know you don't, Kyle, unfortunately. But I, I got to tell you, that was so close there throughout that game. We had a really intense match between our players here, and it could have gone either way. I expected it to be very explosive, and I don't think, uh, I think that's what we saw. Yeah, well, I mean, we had a false start with the Pheasant Dip. Oh, yeah, that was pass, true. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, other than that, it was it was pretty cool. Yeah, we hit the brakes right away with that one. <laughs> Both players did. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. Tor did for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, here you go. Thor able to pull out a win here in our game one between these players. If I recall, there was a ton of time still left on our clock, especially with these fast-paced decks, or at least how these players are playing. But we had a lot of back and forth here in this game between our players. As far as the prize cards, they were flying. Yep, I want to see a little cleaner play on Anthony's side as far as those Teal Mask Ogre Pond really use that resource. Those energies need to stay on there as much as possible. Other than that, though, 
both players with a great opportunity to find a win in this next round or this next game. And I mean, Torch showed us everything we needed to see. Just uh, yeah, you lose the Pheasantivity early, but it lines up every knockout for the rest of the game exactly. with your Burning Darkness. And, uh, it almost looks calculated. Yeah, it almost does. Hey, who knows? Maybe it is. Tord's been, yep. uh, Tord's <laughs> been uh, calculating all he's, these matchups for weeks. He's been sitting in, 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 the, in the hotel for three weeks doing a hand wave to practice <laughs> the, the, the... That Pheasantivity <laughs> Yep. <laughs> uh, well, take the bird. Take the bird, A. Hey, we're gonna take the win there in that game. Anthony, I'm hoping to see some recovery here. As you said, Kyle, uh, maybe a little bit difference in the sequencing. I feel like we've talked about how linear this deck can be, but it does have a lot of sequencing that you have to nail in order to get the full potential of what this deck is. Yeah, drawing the right cards in the right order is the name of the game, and this is not it. This uh, is really yeah, tough. Yeah, that's not a oh, great start. You don't see uh, anything like a squawkability to help out in this spot. And uh, oh, well, I guess, the, I suppose there was a pass of the turn. We're just going in. I love just I the look first. of this board right now. We have the Relor on the uh, active position here for Tord. <laughs> it's sitting there, it's damaged now from that sandy shock. Yeah, knocking your shocks off there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I can't recover from that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got it, boo, don't worry, here comes the TM Evolution and Buddy Buddy Poffin. Oh, here we go. Arvin helping us out here. Tord is going second, so we're gonna see that supporter getting us all of these resources we need. Whoa, look at the prize cards. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I mean. The Poffins, but we got them already we can, secured. Yeah, we can work with this. This is too I mean, we're none the of Poffins. these prizes are gonna be helpful throughout the rest yeah, of the game, but true. at least you have all your resources to find. That's what I'm saying. I. I think this could be pretty solid start, especially if there's an energy. Nope. Oh, uh, no. Nope. You spoke too soon there, <laughs> Kyle. Once again, Tord Reklev whipping the energy. But hey, we've uh, we've seen a lot stacked up against Tord, and he's always able to somehow pull things out. We'll have to see if it's able to happen in this game, too, between these players in our Masters Round 6. Anthony Ribeiro going to kick off this next turn here coming up. Sandy Shocks was the starting Pokemon, yeah. I believe, in the active now we still just have that Teal Mask Ogre Pond. What are we working with Ew. in the hand? We need some help. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> we need some help really bad. There's no energy There's to no accelerate energy? with the Sada. Oh, no. Uh, Pokemon Catcher Stall doesn't even work. As obviously we're intimidated by the Rail Ore. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, that is a fail there, unfortunately. you got to be kidding me. There's what? nothing. Just another Sandy Shocks here, the magnetic burst. That Relor is slowly, very painstakingly being taken out here, Kyle. And uh, Tord is just getting these free turns to work with here. This is the opposite of what you want to see when you're playing such a fast paced and explosive deck such as Raging Bolt. We don't even see a Raging Bolt out there and Tord Reklev is setting things up even more now. We saw the Pokemon come down on the last turn. Pheasantipity is out there for support down the line. Now we're able to get into more of these rare candies, into more Pokemon to chain these cards together. Tor Reklev is churning through this turn. Yeah, the rare candy Pidgeot really just speaks to this, the pace that this game will go uh, for the rest of the game. Finds another buddy buddy, can play it slow, set up a nice board that won't run into any issues throughout the course of this game. Sure, give up a prize card at this point. It doesn't matter. It's going to actually help toward at this stage, maybe even incorporate Defiance Belt, whatever it may be, something to help with uh, additional damage output against relevant Pokemon, not uh, Mr. Rel Shocks over there. Oh, yeah. Yes, exactly. Hey, Mr. Shocks. Yeah, that's a good point, Kyle. All right, we're just going to see uh, all of these Pokemon be established now on the bench. We have a full bench here for Tord. That Relor has been tanking. The, these turns, which is hilarious because it only has 50 HP, which is pretty... It's a wall! <laughs> it's a, it is a wall here, but hey, it's sticking through. No pun intended there, Kyle, either. <laughs> but we have this full bench for Tord, and we're just passing back over to Anthony it can't, now. We, there's not even a retreat option. Oh my gosh, we're just seeing it again! Hey, He doesn't want the time. knockout! <laughs> And I know, but at least we're doing something. We're doing a an action here, Kyle. I mean, th there's a play for Anthony. If he had another energy, he found Raging Bolt. He just can't retreat and oh, put the energies no. in the discard pile. Oh, the, no. The Sada, he's stuck. We got another tank coming in. Oh, but weakness. 
Look out. Yeah, that's, that's true. We have that fighting weakness here oh, on that up. poor little Bidoof, but it is still holding tight. 70 HP. That's just disrespectful to read this card after it's attacked <laughs> you three turns in a row. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, this is not the uh, the turn of events I was expecting here, Kyle, but... Oh, is, is there no weakness? There is no weakness in the... <laughs> I was about to say, did they yeah. take it Magnetic away? Magnetic burst doesn't <laughs> apply weakness. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> all right, maybe we all need to stop and read the card. Oh, I, no. I apologize to all the shock fans out there. <laughs> well, Bidoof now just at 20... I mean, it just gained HP yeah, at this point. honestly, flex. It... <laughs> Bidoof holding up strong there in the active position toward Reklev. Like I said, running away with these turns so far. This is just tragic to see at this point, Kyle. I know we're laughing, we're having a good time, but Anthony is not having a good time on the left side of our field here, especially at such a prestigious event as the World Championships to be shaping up like this. Just a couple of hits from a Sandy Shocks and nothing else that you can be working with. And toward Reklev. All right. Keep let's, going. Let's give him a CD and let him yeah. help me out a bit here. Starts pumping the jams here. Technical machine evolution. We're going to start seeing these evolutions come out onto the field now here for Tord into that uh, Rapska. Yep. I was like, what All right, is this we can name? read this card. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yes, yeah. That one's okay to read there for sure. And Charmeleon as well coming down onto the field for Tord. Like I said, these are just free turns here, and Tord is slowly establishing an almost unbeatable board state here now against Anthony. What do we have now? Was there anything we could work with on a top deck? Should I lie to you? Yes. It's great. <laughs> oh, no. You're going to love it. Oh, no. We hurt you like Raging Bolt. So we put a Raging Bolt in uh, your Raging Bolt deck. Oh, my gosh. That's going to be it. This Bidoof still tanking its way in the active position. Now it's at 40. They're chanting MVP. 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 Yeah. MVP. Hey, we love Bidoof out here. I, I, I got to tell you. That's, that's, that's like one of the cutest artworks as well. He's doing work. You know, he's, you know he's absolutely there, there, was a, there was a lot of uh, talk about his brother protecting himself on the bench. No. This, no, no, no. This guy gets the job done. <laughs> In oh, the active wow. position, too. <laughs> uh, Bitch.ex utilizing that quick search. Any card from the deck here now. Torrid, I see a, a slight smile here as how this game is going. I'm sure he's feeling nice and happy here. Going to attach another Ooh. energy to this Bidoof <laughs> and the boss orders. No wonder he's smiling. He just attacked with Bidoof at the World Championships. <gasps> what? We see a rollout 30 damage from a Bidoof onto a Teal Mask Ogre Pawn it's, against Anthony. It's relevant. It is. <laughs> it's That's relevant. the funny part. It's relevant for darkness. <laughs> it actually is. I cannot believe this is happening right now, but Bidoof absolutely is relevant. You were right about uh, him carrying the team Oh, right no. Now. But he walked right into it. No. <laughs> now the retreat <laughs> leads into the sauna. Oh, my goodness. He doesn't even want it. He's going to just draw <laughs> with the teal mask. Well, we see another teal mask. That's going to be the one accelerated to you now on the bench here for Anthony. No Draw another shot. card. What do we have? Finds a poke, poke here. here. If we see a third Sada's added, uh, this is just a ridiculous game. <laughs> Boss's orders. There oh, we go. Oh, here we Sprinkle go. Sprinkle it in. That is a nice supporter here. Boss's orders to find off of that pokey gear. Top seven cards. Any supporter card. And that is definitely a, a good supporter card indeed here for Anthony. Yep. <laughs> At this point, Anthony hoping maybe Tord Prize, you know, four fires and a Turo. <laughs> maybe yeah. we can lock something L up. <laughs> Little does he know, it's two irrelevant Buddy Buddy Poffins <laughs> <laughs> in the prize cards. Oh, my goodness. Boss's orders is going to be played now. That was what was sought out after that pokey gear. Fezzidipity joining us in the active here. And Sandy Shocks, this is now, what, the fourth time? That is 100 damage. It has attacked. <laughs> Five <laughs> magnetic bursts. All di <laughs> to different Pokemon. Yes. Well played. <laughs> well played indeed. I mean, Sandy Shocks has never seen this much play, I think. Usually it just pops out of nowhere and hits for, for the end game. Uh, in some of these matchups, 
or at least yeah, maybe tries as another to beat option. up a mimic you here yes, and there. Yes, exactly. Yeah, this, this is not uh, its stomping grounds. No, not at all. But I'll tell you what, it is stomping. That is for sure. It's spreading damage all over the place on Tord Reckliff's side of the field. If only it was more relevant there for Anthony. Tord Reckliff, on the other hand, getting that relevant damage out onto the field from on Anthony's side and into an Ultra Ball here for this turn to start us off. Temple of Sinnoh, uh, as well as the Pokemon going into the discard pile. And at this point, you have to think about your energies. <laughs> if, if you have the Super Rods, which we know he does, they're that's not in the prize cards, that you're not going to be as susceptible. But maybe we could see some shenanigans. We see the Thornton being held in the hand, perhaps a surprise uh, Charizard oh come gosh. into the woodworks at some point. That'd be wild. I mean, you can set up things like this when your opponent's dealing 20 all game. So uh, who knows? <laughs> accurate, accurate. Uh, <laughs> I got to say, when I was wanting a Raging Bolt matchup, I was hoping it was not going to turn out like this. But hey, that Bidoof is now evolved into a Bibarel. And we're going to see this Industrious Incisors here for Tord Reckliff, drawing into one card up to five in the hands. Yeah, no rush. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're cruising. Just, we've, uh, slowed the, we've slowed things down here. That Pidgeot EX as well, utilizing its Quick Search. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. You quick Search is so wild. You can't give Tord this many resources. <laughs> I know. It's not okay. It's unstoppable. When we forced him to draw two at a time, he still found what he needed. But when he could just go pick it out of the deck, that's just <laughs> brutal. Yeah, that is dangerous indeed. And we're seeing the effects of that toward Reklev getting everything needed here to set things up in this matchup. Professor Tro's scenario. Scenario? Scenario. What, scenario. <laughs> what that's, Wait, what yeah, that, that's up to either one of us. You can pick whichever you want. <laughs> <laughs> Getting things done here. Uh, Palpad also being utilized here from Tor. Didn't see the uh, supporters that were chosen off of that, but they're being put back into the deck now. I'm going to assume that Turo was one of those. It's yes. In a game like this where your opponent is just grasping at straws, hoping to lock you in the active spot, you want to make sure you have that resource as many Call times as you need. Call them out. Exactly. Make sure you put those obstacles in their way, and Tord has been doing that here, even if those obstacles look like Bidoof and Arellor. And now we're going to see a lot of switching here, here it happening. Is. Yep. This was available last turn, but instead the energy retrieval was used. Professor Turo to find three additional cards. Can they help? No, it's some energies in, a, in another. Oh, uh, you know, it's Sada. I was about to me. say, I was about to say. I'm getting my professors mixed up. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Ancients and the future here, but we're on the Ancient Professor Sada's Vitality to draw some cards. Raging Bolt being benched now with an energy attachment as well for the turn. Are you, you going to hurt me? Power Gem? Power Gem? What is this? Looks like they're discussing, yeah, they're discussing the Power Gem. Like, all right, you knocked me out. <laughs> Thank you. I've been, I've been trying to get rid of this Pokemon for a while. I need those energies back. Oh. Oh my goodness, yep, that is going to be surprisingly our very first knockout of this game, too, between oh, these players. Those ones. <laughs> Six full turns, <laughs> seven full turns. Oh, yeah, I think that's exactly yep. what we're sitting at now that's, here, that's Kyle. That's the thing. It, yeah, this has been a match for sure, and Sandy Shocks has been carrying the team from Anthony's knock, side. Knock. Yeah, knock, knock. Counter catcher <laughs> at your door. I know, exactly. Just when you take a prize card, you unlock so much there for Tord Reklev now. Just having a free counter catcher because he's currently behind in the prize cards. Instantly promoting that Raging Bolt EX into the active position here now. Yep. Defiance Band coming down onto that Charmeleon here for Tord. Also being unlocked. Yeah, can't make it much easier than this at this point. The single prize taken in combination with the Defiance Band leads to knockout on the active Pokemon. <laughs> Take those initial prize cards, and it gets scary from here. We see the Super Rod to add back in those additional oh. resources. You'd love to see Fire Energies here, as you kind of need to pull those back out of the deck with Charizard. <laughs> yes, that is very true. Luminion going back into the deck with some Energies here for Tord, being shuffled back up. 
We've already used that flip the script because of that knockout on the last turn as well. Also being activated. I mean, there's so many cards in this deck that play so well. Once you're a little bit behind the curve, you get behind the curve for a second, but then you actually take control of the match with all of these pieces that come together in a seamless way for you to line up your strategies. You have a full sense of security, typically on the other side of the board. And, uh, it looked a lot more believable in the opening game, but the game two, <laughs> that was a forced prize card, and here comes the pain. Charizard EX ready to go. The pain from the infernal rain, Ooh. Kyle, making it rain some fire energy here. Now from this Charizard EX ability, accelerating these energy down. Uh, it's taken so many turns, but we are here now with this Charizard EX, and it is ginormous, yep. 330 hit points, as well as a Defiance Band attached to it. Lots of damage it's, it's doing, and it is, now this is a wall. This, <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh, that's two prize cards down. Raging Bolt, it was only there for one turn. Now it is wiped off the field here. Sandy Shocks joining us once again in the active position. It's like, oh, you're putting me back to work? Coach, I've been waiting for this moment. <laughs> I promise the seventh one will be much better than the sixth. We're using some of our teal dance here, both being utilized already from Anthony to draw into some additional cards. Nest Ball as well, going through the deck here to search out a basic Pokemon. Yep, there's not too many surprises from this point. No energy switch potential to uh, work in a surprise knockout by the Teal Mask Ogre Pond. So. We'll see all of this coming and sure will toward as he knows that, yeah. uh, oh, he can just target those guys down with uh, boss's orders. <laughs> the exactly. Lines up, lines up pretty well. 210, sign me up. I know. It's so unfortunate here. I mean, you have so much support. You're hoping for those big uh, initial turns. But then once you get into the late game, then you're like, I uh, wish I had a little more HP on my field here. But hey, at least the Pheasant Dippity is coming out. It is uh, also. 210, but it's flipping the script, drawing some cards here for Anthony. At this point, we need anything that we can get to try to rescue this right now. But what are we working with here for the turn, Kyle? Yeah, you, I mean, you try to pick apart this board state and find a weakness on towards side where you can potentially remove a relevant Pokemon, but also take knockouts and keep energies on your board. And you just can't do all these things at once. It's not going to happen. So deal with the yeah. threats that you have in front of you two energies from the Teal Mask, two energies from Sada, and one energy for your attachment for turn. It deals with the Pokemon here, but that is asking so much every single turn, and we still haven't seen the unfair stamp, I believe. Yeah, yeah, we, ha we haven't seen a ton of disruption because there were really was nothing to disrupt. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing's um, happened. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, so all of those disruption items for Tord are still at his uh, availability, at, at, able to be accessed from this deck and utilized against Anthony in the worst way possible coming up. But hey, at least we got that Professor Sada's vitality here, uh, got those energies accelerated, and here we see a counter attack coming from Anthony's side of the field onto that Charizard EX. We saw it in the last game, a clean hit here, taking out that Charizard EX, despite its giant wall knock, of knock. HP. <laughs> and now towards back at it again. Yep, there's another counter catcher in the hand. It's four to three prize cards. It's like Tord knows the script exactly That's how it saying. plays. That's what I'm saying. You can't beat this. There's, there's, un, there's the unfair stamp, the counter catcher, uh, the, the Radiant Charizard to go along with this. It is a dangerous place to play Pokemon. Uh, yes, I would say so. Indeed. Here, Tord has all the pieces after that Arvin searching out a tool card, an item card, or sorry, an item card and a tool card. The uh, slight debate here from Tord if you uh, target down. Uh, maybe the the draw engine or the uh, the teal mask that was. Oh yeah, in. look at that. I, uh, I I agree with this play wholeheartedly. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do not uh, let Anthony see three cards for free. Exactly. You're gonna be drawing five cards. Your opponent is only gonna be drawing two cards. That is the disruption that Tor needs to really set this over the edge. Not that we really need that as much, but hey. 
you want to take as safe of a play as possible when you're playing on the big stage at the World Championships. Tord Reklev is doing it at this point in time, and he's definitely giving us a show. Oh, it's all lining up here. You see already in the hand, a hand that likely doesn't uh, see any replacement from Anthony's side of the board. Not really a deck that features uh, that disruption, just the solo Iono uh, to help out. Rare candy, multiple rare candy, the Ultra Ball for the Charizard EX, and the boss's orders already uh, ready to go in the hand for Tord. Ah, that is brutal, Kyle. That is brutal. I mean, we know the script because we see both the hands, but uh, it's not looking great. It is not looking great. Super Rod being utilized here now to draw some, some, a couple of cards out of the discard pile, shuffle them back into the deck as well. Tord has really worked out every single thing in this matchup. We're gonna see a Beaverell as well as two Fire Energy being shuffled back in. Yeah, and at this point, uh, I don't even think you need the Beaverell. I was gonna say, yeah, you don't. And I don't see a reason not to use Ultra Ball at this stage. Your opponent, uh, if they handle the Charizard, they lose. If they handle the Radiant Charizard, you have the, Char uh, the Charizard EX waiting for them uh, on the bench. So you might as well just promote all these and avoid any shenanigans. I agree with that. Well, we're going to see this evolution now. That little Charmander, thanks to a rare candy, it ate a nice little bonbon, and now it's a Charizard EX. No love for Charmeleon. Just, just <laughs> hey, we saw one for a while. It, it is in the deck. It does not care. <laughs> yeah. That is very true. Well, Radiant Charizard, not only do we have the Charizard EX, but we have a Fire-type Charizard here, the one we're a little bit more used to. And that is going to be what is utilized here, a single prize card Pokemon taking out that Pheasantipity EX. This was after so many cards and disruption have been played from Tord Reklev's side. Two prize cards left to take to take a 2-0 victory in this matchup. Just under 10 minutes between these players. Anthony Ribeiro left once again with a Sandy Shocks in the active position. But hey, now we see a new card. Night Stretcher. Night Stretcher. Okay. That works Taking out back pretty well out. here. Yeah, it actually does. This is a new card here from Shrouded Fable, you put a Pokemon or a basic energy from your discard pile back into your hands. It's fairly well there, find three additional resources, but they're not lining up for knockouts at this point. That's really what we need to see. It has to be Professor Sada's at this point to see a relevant knockout. And if that happens, you don't remove the boss's orders from towards hand. How do you take a knockout without a Pokemon that's probably an EX? Exactly. It is a tough situation to be in here, but Anthony is not giving up. We're seeing these teal dance happening on the bench here from these Ogre Pond, drawing into some additional cards for Anthony. Raging Bolt EX out there on the bench. Fezzendipity has already flipped scripts here. Concealed cards being utilized as well. Now bench down that Radiant Greninja, drawing into two additional cards. Anything that you see, Kyle, that might change the pace of this? Oh, we're running out of options. The energies typically help, but so many abilities already used at this point. Yeah. It just hasn't led to too much, and I don't think we see the supporter for the turn. That is unfortunate. Yeah, we haven't seen any of these, the energy attachments. Here we've you would just seen never them. imagine that seven additional cards were drawn this turn because yeah, exactly. nothing has happened. Yes, the energies are in play there, but just so That's unfortunate it. that it hasn't turned into even a, a, a chance at a knockout. Well, here's the manual attachment now. That fighting energy going down onto the Raging Bolt EX. That's one piece of the future puzzle here, but I don't think it's enough here, Kyle. Yeah, we're asking a lot for Tord to not have boss's orders at this point of the game. But uh, we're going we're gonna to go out of this world the same way we came in. We're going to magnetic burst a little bit. Again? I think there's one energy there, guys, but sure. Oh, yeah, the magnetic burst does the additional damage. Yeah, we, you know, I think we're fine. <laughs> Boss's orders, energy right. for retreat. Charizard EX is going to close this thing out. Tord Reklev, 5-0-1. Only tie on his record against another former world champion, Jesper Eriksson. So, oh, uh, my goodness. These guys are doing work.